Hello, hello, and welcome to Leonard Place Komarebi. Thank you for coming again to part number five. Uh, this is the fifth part in the Let's Play series. We're going to be moving on to the second half of the demo, um, the part that was released as part of version three of the Komarebi demo that's available on uh, the Komarebi itch.io uh, website. Um, so as, as Clace has indicated in his README, there are two uh, save files included with this download. Uh, one, in case we uh, are interested in pursuing a deeper relationship with Isaac, and one, in case um, we are interested in holding back. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to make use of those, and as I understand, I do have to uh, speed through Heart to Heart with Dante. So I will do that quickly once we get to the fragment map. Ah, uh, yes, and the second half of the demo is not yet voice acted. Uh, <clears throat> of course, it will be in the final release of the game, uh, but we will have to make do with an abundance of creativity. Experience Heart to Heart Fragment. Dante won. Right, let's speed through this one, just for the completion. Hey, Delta. Just finished uh, Heart to Heart with Dante. Um, so we are starting from the very end of this fragment map. Uh, the very last fragment was uh, the pre-gaming leading up to Isaac's big surprise nightclub party. Um, well, part of it is a surprise. We've, the crew has gradually been <laughs> trying to trying to eke out details about this from him uh, but let's let's get into it experience culmination fragment the nightclub outing culmination fragment the nightclub outing <laughs> thank you for choosing Argus our future your way he reads through some papers as I tell him my weekend plans. He wanted to make sure that my social life was thriving in this new setting. It was, for now. He seems happy that I have a new group of friends in my life. Right, of course. The nightclub trip. And the, uh, pre-gaming. Well, at least you're being social. Not something I'd recommend making a habit of, though. The pre-gaming, I mean. Not the socializing. Having a friend group is healthy, and can make all the difference. I'm glad that you're able to get along with Isaac's friends, too. Bringing a new person into a social group can often be complicated. You'll probably notice that you're under a microscope, too at least for a while. But they should seek your approval just as much as you're seeking theirs. After getting caught up, he puts the papers off to the side. Speaking of that though, have you been seeking more than friends? It's healthy to date and test the waters, you know. I told Isaac that I'd like to give it a try, actually. Makes perfect sense. You did move here for him, after all. And if not for him, then at least to live with him, which is a big gesture. 
From everything I've been told, it seems like you two get along just fine. Here I am, having a conversation with myself. I feel like I'm... Isn't Bugs Bunny doing doing one of those skits where, uh, where he's like all the characters in the room? <laughs> the, the, the what about me boss uh, scene. Oh, he scribbles notes down on a piece of paper that rests beside him. I'm tempted to ask him what he's writing down, but I know it's nothing bad. In fact, I'm pretty sure that I'll be cleared as a patient within a month or so. Have your friends told you about their Komorebi? I mean, do you know if any of them are like you? Bonding over a shared trait can always help. I let him know that I'm definitely the odd one out. They didn't reveal their visions, but I knew they had them. For the time being, I was definitely alone with this struggle. I guess the odds were incredibly slim. But as far as I'm concerned, it was worth a shot. If you're interested, I could hook you up with some support groups. I let him know that I'm not interested in that. Like I've said many times before, my lack of vision doesn't affect me. Oh, that's exactly why I recommend you go to a support group. I think others could benefit from hearing how you think and feel. Whether you know it or not, you're a pretty remarkable case. I shrug and ask him if that means he's close to clearing me as a patient. One step at a time, Delta. I can't make a big decision like that unless I'm certain. Thankfully, your honesty and cooperation are helping. I can't help but direct my attention to some colorful papers by his side. They look like pamphlets, so I decide to ask him what they are. My best guess is that he already had some support groups in mind. Oh, these? A zero handed them to me on my way to work. I guess part of their protesting involves spreading around propaganda. This first one claims that Argus is responsible for Komorebi. He picks up the pamphlet and opens it. It says that they engineered it somehow. Then they swooped in to play the savior and control society. Those who don't experience visions are just strong enough to resist. With a laugh, he places it back down and grabs the other. Now, this one was actually more interesting. It says that the existence of Komorebi disproves free will. That's clearly not true. I wonder if they actually believe this. He flips through the second pamphlet. Unfortunately, we've seen people take their own lives due to Komorebi. This very act proves that, to some degree, we can still control fate. The leading theory is that these visions are more like warnings. You know, a kind of heads up of what could be. Some people even believe that they're glimpses into alternate worlds. Of course, I didn't bring you here to talk about metaphysical nonsense. I'm intrigued by this conversation, so I decide to turn the tables. <laughs> decide to turn the tables. Oh, we know that Delta is kind of a playful person. Um, a, a quiet but playful person. It's, it's always always the quiet ones, right? Um, that kind of trope. I think I'm, if I'm recalling correctly, Delta does describe themselves um, as a bit of a rebel in one of the journal entries.
I ask him where he stands on the subject, what he believes. Well, I believe that we'll never know the truth of Komorebi, but many visions have come to pass, while many haven't. And as I said before, some people don't live to find out. If I had to commit to an idea, I'd say I agree with the leading theory. They're just possible outcomes, nothing set in stone or predestined. Argus isn't responsible, and we still have free will at the end of the day. Of course, that's just wishful thinking. We'll never really know. Some visions could just be tricks to send people down a certain path. I think it's more important to handle things on an individual basis. For example, what does your vision, or lack of vision, mean to you? It's best to lead with that, rather than to seek out a universal truth. Like I always say, truth can just be a gateway to more fright. Truth can just be a gateway to more fright. Hmm, okay. He puts the second pamphlet down. I hope people don't start believing these silly stories. If those zeros are really here to cause trouble, I'd avoid them. No sense getting caught up in something like this, you know? I nod, and choose not to mention the zero I ran into. Besides, something told me our session was quickly running out of time. We continued to talk, but all I can think about is the upcoming festivities. Excuse me. I am with you there, Delta. Excuse me again. I've definitely been... distracted. Um, distracted by upcoming plans while trying to get through everyday life. And it feels like I am just... Um, uh, oh, distracted by a phone notification now. It feels like I am just on autopilot, just breezing through. Oh, that's nice. Um, Garage said that my car is ready to be picked up. I can appreciate them texting instead of calling. I can appreciate that. Um, let's turn on the do not disturb. <clears throat> yeah, all I can think about is the upcoming festivities, too. We make our way down the city streets as the booze starts to wear off. Here we go, we are on our way to the club. It was a long walk to the nightclub, but we didn't feel like driving or using public transit. Yes, driving would have been a bad idea. Because of that, we wobble slightly as we head toward our destination, Club Euphoria. Driving would definitely have been a bad idea. I'm surprised your friend didn't help us out with transportation. What do you mean? Gives us an open bar but didn't send us a limo? Rude. Don't get greedy. It was a nice gesture. He just wants to get things off to a good start. Well, my legs are killing me. So we're off to a great start. Remind me to give him an earful when we get there. Speaking of which, I still need to yell at Dante. What did I do now? I heard that noise when you connected to our speakers, dude. Was I not clear enough the other day? Don't mess with my mods. 
I haven't! Well, not since then. It's just been a while since anyone connected like that. Trust me, Isaac. I made those changes months ago. Is that supposed to get you off the hook? I'm just being honest, man. I guess we'll see. Dante scoffs and looks the other way. You know, I might not drink as much as I thought tonight. What? Why is that? It's these new painkillers. Wait, you're in pain? Yeah, because you won't get off my back. Is it too much to ask for just one night of fun? You're the one who wanted that, yet you're tearing into me. An awkward silence fills the air as they stare at one another. But just like usual, they erupt into laughter only a few moments later. Fine, fine. I'll try to ease up on you a little bit. If we want to be friends forever, I might just have to. All of a sudden, I start to think about the conversation we had earlier. In their visions, they were no longer in touch. No longer a friend group. You really think we can pull that off? I guess it's worth a shot. Isaac stops in his tracks and turns to face all of us. Then we should make a pact. Like with blood? No. Shame. I always wanted to do one of those. I'd rather not have your blood on my hands, Taylor. But I thought we were finally bonding. Come on, can you please take this seriously for a second? I just want to make sure that we don't all drift apart. And how do you suggest we do that? The group chat, probably. Let's promise to keep using it, no matter where we are. Even if it's just one or two messages a week. No pressure, right? Then we really can be friends, forever. Right now, you're all important to me. I think about you all the time, but in my vision, like I said, I'm not even aware of your existence. Tragic. Everybody should know who I am, but on a more serious note, I guess I can manage that. Yeah. I don't plan on leaving the group, so I'm down. Then let's make it official. He puts out his hand, palm facing down. One by one, we stack our hands on top of his. I wait until the end, since I'm the newest one here. Friends, until the end. Until the end. We all say that in unison, and look at each other with big smiles. <laughs> I'd be grimacing if I was, if I was Delta. <laughs> Which, I guess a grimace is a kind of nervous smile. It's like that, you know, you know how they say that, that smiles are like evolutionarily, um, evolutionarily conserved across species as not only um, they can not only communicate happiness but or familiarity, but they can also communicate like fear or nervousness, which is what a grimace is it's like a it's like a tight lipped grin kind of um, a moment later, we pull back our hands and con continue on our way. I had no problem with the agreement since it seemed pretty low maintenance. It's a little odd, but this pact suddenly made my life feel more grounded. If we really followed through, I'd always have friends to support me. That 
made this scary new city seem all the more inviting. By the time the night was over, this place would be home. I decide to bring up something that my counselor told me at our session. There's a theory that Komorebi isn't set in stone. It's just a possibility. A pact like this could very well defy what they believed to be fate. Ah, yes. The parallel universe thing. If that's true, then I'm screwed no matter what. If you're my best friends, then this is clearly the darkest timeline. Rude. Hey, don't worry. I thrive in the dark. I notice that Dante looks a little worried. You know, your counselor isn't supposed to do that, right? He's supposed to stick to facts and Argus approved exercises. I may be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's off curriculum, so to speak. Yeah, and that could only come from someone who's never had a vision. That could only come from someone who's never had a vision. I'm... Whoa! He nailed that one on the head, Taylor did. That could only come from someone who's never... So I'm guessing these visions are, like, pretty super freaking vivid that, like, they, they're really convinced that these visions are exactly what's going to happen. People like us, who live with Komarebi, kind of find that laughable. It's something you can't understand. Not unless you've lived it. I ask him for some clarification, as I'm a little confused. Well, I didn't have a speech prepared or anything, but it'd be like hosting a lecture on something you know nothing about. And not only that, but your students are already experts on the subject. That would be both difficult and embarrassing. Think about it this way. It's inescapable, even if you escape it. We could defy our vision, sure, but we still have to experience it. Every day, we face the future as if it were the present. I get what he's saying. It's like, it's like even though a bad dream isn't real, you still experienced it as if it was real. And that experience itself is painful. It carries the full weight, emotional weight, of, of what was happening in the dream. It's indistinguishable from reality, and it's awful. So, even if we are friends forever, I'll still lose you all the time. Who cares if it's another world or universe? The feelings are all real. Wow. He nailed it. I guess... I never thought of it that way before. Even if we learn the origin of these visions, they'll still happen every day. They'd exist alongside the truth and probably even overpower it. Though, I have to say, we should probably change the subject. This whole thing seems like a recipe for depression. So let's not sabotage our night out. True. And honestly, thanks for your input, Delta. I know that you were only trying to help out. I nod and tell him it's fine. It's true, though. It wasn't my place to speak out about Komorebi. Building off of that lecture metaphor, I should be sitting and listening. Whoa. Didn't expect such a big lineup. We round the next corner, and I see the nightclub for the first time. For some reason, it looks exactly how I expected it, it would. But Isaac was right. The lineup was massive. Why does it look exactly as Delta expected it would? 
for some reason, for some unknown reason. Does Delta, like, actually have Komorebi, but, like, like, um, a weaker version of it? Hmm. I thought you said they canceled the event. They did. I guess this is just the kind of traffic they get. It's the most popular club in town, after all. Hopefully, it's earned that title. Any chance your friend can help with the line? I think he did, actually. Uh, let me go talk to the person at the door. Isaac motions for us to wait as he approaches the club. We stand around and exchange glances with one another. Dante still looks worried and inches closer to me. You know, I, I was serious about what I said. Your, your counselor isn't supposed to talk about that kind of stuff. If you reported him, you might be able to get cleared as a patient. I shrug. That seems extremely unfair. And I doubt that reporting him would get me cleared. They'd probably just transfer me over to somebody else. I'm already making progress with him, so I can't do that. Starting all over with another counselor would be super tedious. Dante nods as I speak my thoughts. He seems to understand. Well, sometimes these things benefit other people. You might be fine, but he's still breaking the rules. That could be harmful. It's not a good thing to feel to fill people's heads with nonsense, especially in therapy. I I get what he's I get what he says. Um, <laughs> sometimes he's he's saying that my reporting him could benefit others, uh, other patients by preventing by preventing um, by preventing him from spreading his theories to other patients. He has a point, but before we can talk any further, Isaac returns. Good news, we get to skip the line. And all of a sudden, your friend is back in my good books. The mood of the group instantly skyrockets. Waiting in a long line would have honestly killed the flow of our evening. Thankfully, Isaac's friend planned around that fact. Well then, what kind of drink should we order first? That question lingers as we make our way inside the nightclub. A few people complain that we're able to skip the line. It's kind of flattering. I have no right to feel this way, but it makes me feel important. And special. Excitement! The big excitement. <laughs> okay, I need to go pick up my car. I will be back. I will be back. And I'm back. Two days later. <laughs> All right, time to party. Tequila! Dante quickly downs a shot, signaling me and Taylor to do the same. Isaac scurried off to prepare whatever needed to be prepared. As always, he remained tight-lipped until the very end. I'm so ready to pay for this in the morning. I guess we're just gluttons for punishment. How about we grab another round and go sit down? At this rate, it could be hours before Isaac comes back. Sounds good to me. Hey, barkeep, three more tequila shots, please. And it should be covered. We're part of Isaac's group. The bartender shrugs and says they have no idea what we're talking about. There are no reservations or holds in place for someone by the name of Isaac. 
There's some stuff happening on the second floor, but not down here. The second floor? The VIP section? We turn to face each other, a little wide-eyed. Taylor leans in and starts whispering. That's amazing and all, but who's paying for these? They're already preparing the next round of shots. I'll get hit, don't worry. I got a bit of an advance from my publisher. Just don't let them know that I wasted it on booze. I'm sure they're used to hearing that, Dante. What is a writer if not an alcoholic in disguise? Maybe save the trash talk until after you're treated. If I just pay for me and Delta, you'll get kicked out. And suddenly I was joking. You're the best friend ever, I swear. Sure. The bartender places three shot glasses in front of us. In return, Dante waves his phone in front of a scanner. The transaction is completed and we grab the shots. Hey, follow me. I know exactly where we can sit. And thanks a million, Dante. I really mean it. Someday I'll find a way to repay you. Is he is he being sarcastic or does does Dante have maybe a history of paying for Taylor's drinks? <laughs> you could stop making fun of my career for one. Like I said, someday I'll find a way to repay you. We follow Taylor as we talk, and eventually find an empty table. Making sure not to spill the shots, we place them down as we sit. Speaking of which, is your channel okay, Taylor? Actually, it's pretty great. You seem pretty scared about those shots. Like you couldn't spare the 60 bucks. I don't like spending money if I can avoid it. And there's no point spending it if someone else will treat me. That's kind of why I agreed to this nightclub thing from the start. It makes sense that you rely on handouts. Now I know why the donate button takes up your entire page. <laughs> Bigger is better, as they say. A donate button that takes up the entire page. That has got to be exaggerating. But it's not just donations, Dante. I have one of the highest sub counts on the platform. Really? I guess I don't watch you that much. I wasn't paying much attention when I guessed it either. It's true! Your boy is making history! When I get a book deal, maybe you can help me out? On that note, how is your latest project going? Well, at a snail's pace. But at least it's moving. I took a few days off to celebrate Delta's arrival. Especially tomorrow. You know, hangover day. Can't enjoy the highs without the lows. But don't worry, I'll make us some mimosas in the morning. Sometimes the best way to cure a hangover is to drink more. I refuse to believe that. You're a loss, but nothing ventured, nothing gained. Let's have a little toast to the unknown. It's not unknown, it's literally not true. Taylor shrugs and grabs his shot glass. We down the next round of tequila. It's a little gross. You know what they say about too much of a good thing. Well, maybe I'll believe you and get a big breakfast instead. My contract doesn't want me drinking too much anyways. Wait, they control what you can do? You say that like it's abnormal, man. There's always somebody on top of us that tells us what to do. Though, I can think of a few scenarios where that wouldn't be too bad. I want you to know that I got your joke. It just wasn't good. Dante, Dante, um, <laughs> boycotting the joke with refusing to laugh. Well, I'm no writer. Just an entertainer. I kind of do what you do, but with less elegance. 
basically get paid to vocalize my thoughts all day. I'm surprised people pay for that. I didn't pay a thing, and I still want a refund after listening to you. Well, there's a market for everything. It just doesn't have to be good. I mean, look at how many copies your novels have sold. Dante laughs and shares a big smile with Taylor. I honestly have no comeback for that one. You win this round, but I'll get you next time. Looking forward to it. You are always a worthy opponent. Any idea what's taking Isaac so long, by the way? He hasn't said a thing in the group chat since he left. Well, we know he's upstairs now. He's probably making the VIP section look pretty for us. Guess that gives me time for a much needed bathroom break. Giving me and Delta some alone time, huh? I'd never torture my friends like that. I just gotta go. He smirks at me before leaving the table. An awkward silence follows, and I look around the club. Something feels different about tonight, and it's not just the alcohol. It feels like I'm actually getting to know these people. When I first arrived, it was clear that they were putting on an act. I don't blame them. First impressions are often important. But the second impression can be even more important in my books. You know, the, the person you see when the courtesies start to fade. Not a bad thing in any way. It means they're getting used to me. Guess this silence isn't a bad time to gather my thoughts. <laughs> Guess this silence isn't a bad time to gather my thoughts. <laughs> Interact with each word to learn more about it. Upon interacting with all three, your experience will continue. You know what would make this just next level it would be would be if Delta had a Google Glass. That way they could actually be just zoning out, staring into these three words on a screen, and no one would um, no one would pay any mind while I am gathering my thoughts. Hey, get your head out of the clouds! We finally get to hang out alone and you zone out. If I didn't know any better, I'd take it as an insult. Oh my goodness. Taylor shattering, shattering my reveries. Well, someone did take notice that I was just about to zone out. I shake my head and apologize. In retrospect, it, it was kind of rude. Who knows, maybe, maybe Delta did reach up and tap a button on their Google Glass or whatever visor they have on in this day and age. You mean a lot to Isaac. He's made that very clear. And from what I've experienced, you do seem pretty awesome. Since he's taking his sweet time, how about we chat for a bit? That's true. We did have more than enough time to chat. Isaac is being slow, and I saw the bathroom line up awaiting Dante. I lean back in my chair and try to make myself more comfortable. It seemed like I'd be sitting here for a while longer, yet. Experience heart to heart fragment, Taylor one. Yes. Hold on, just let me move over here. There we go. Much better. Such a joker. <laughs> I turn to face Taylor, immediately making things more personal. This was the first time we'd ever been alone. Buzzed in an obnoxiously loud club. 
What a perfect time to get to know each other. Oh, I can already see the eye rolls, except that this is Delta's internal monologue, so if I rolled my eyes, Taylor would have no idea what, what it was about. An awkward smile between the two of us marks the start of our conversation. I was warned about his drunken behavior, so I actually have no idea what to expect. You know, I'm pretty proud of that sass off I had with Dante. Usually he can pin me down, but I'm getting better on my feet. A quick wit can beat a sharp mind any day of the week. But a few shots of booze can easily bring that wit to a full stop. Considering that, I think I handled myself pretty well. Maybe one of these days you and I can go head to head. Us? Face to face? I like the sound of that. Really? That's the best you've got? I'm not opposed to it, but you gotta work on your game. The ice is already broken, Delta. Swim a little deeper. We exchange a smile again, but it's much less awkward. That's probably for the best, since I assume we'll become be uh, close friends. Possibly best friends. <laughs> this group seems super tight-knit. Getting close to one meant getting close to all. You know, before you came along, I was the newest member of the group. It's been that way for a couple years. But now we have some new blood. I get to look at you through the same lens they use to judge me. But don't worry, I like what I see. So, do you move around a lot? Or will you be here long term? Excuse me. I plan to be here long term. Good to know. You seem nice. The reason I ask is because I used to move around all the time. From one place to another, the system always kept me mobile. He fiddles with the shot glass in front of him. So this fresh start thing, I know what it's like. I brag about having more practice, but that's not really a good thing. Moving around made it really hard to keep a stable group of friends. I've been there. I've moved around a lot too. When I got my first phone though, everything changed. Making friends and keeping in touch when I move away? Priceless. I guess I also made some pretty good jokes. <laughs> Got a lot of followers. So, when I decided to start streaming, I already had an audience. The transition from hobbyist to full-time job happened almost overnight. I bought a house here, settled down, then met the rest of the group. And now, I'm sitting here with you. That's the story of Taylor. You'll have to forgive me, I'm not one to really open up like this. But when you talk to strangers all day, you kinda need to hold back. Don't get me wrong, I love my viewers more than anything. And yeah, there's lots of regulars. But it all feels so surface level, you know? I'll never bond with them like I did with Isaac and Dante. Guess I'm just one of those quality over quantity guys. Kinda ironic that I chose a field where numbers mean everything, then. Can't complain too much though. I guess I do have the best of both worlds. It's odd to see someone so successful have gripes with their life. But I guess nothing can be positive all the time. Even stardom could have its drawbacks. I'm glad we got to have some time to ourselves, Delta. Even if it felt like I did most of the talking, I think I, I needed that. I talk to people all the time, but it's rarely about anything real. How about you join me at my place next week? We can have a blast tonight, 
and pick this up next time. Maybe I'll even let you guest on my stream. If you're nice. Oh, and we'll have a lot more privacy there. Feel free to take that one however you will. He smirks at me, and I give him a quick nod. There's no reason why that shouldn't work, so I agree. A crowded nightclub isn't the best place to form a bond. Well, I guess it depends on what you're looking for, actually. But right now, I had no interest in extending my reach beyond this group. <sighs> this <laughs> clueless expression on Taylor's face. Oh, adorable. Even though I've known Isaac for years, I'm getting to know him all over again. That's a good thing, though. It was an adventure that I was happy to embark on. Getting to know these people and their quirks could only happen once. One day I'd definitely look back on this and wish I could relive it all. You really are the master of daydreaming, huh? Well, I guess all of this could be pretty overwhelming. New city, new friends, new everything, really. I'll try not to add to the pile, so don't worry. Well, except for tonight. I can't make that promise. This club is just a new experience for all of us, not just you. I noticed Dante return from the bathroom in the corner of my eye. Taylor must see that I'm distracted, and he turns to look. Hey, it's about time. Delta was almost boring me to death. Whoa, he's insulting you. Just so you know, that means he has a crush. He sits down and plays with the empty shot glass in front of him. Sorry I took so long, by the way. Some guy tried to sell me drugs. Did you buy enough for all of us? Dude, drugs are bad. All right, and how many energy drinks have you had all day? Two? Ah, uh, yes, there's the double standard. Can't say I didn't warn you about that contest, man. It was just the ploy to create new addicts. Nothing more. Yeah, yeah, I heard you the first thousand times. I'd be worried that they're fighting, but I know better than that by now. <laughs> this is just how they get along. If they hated each other, they wouldn't talk at all. And what I've understood from, uh, from being in the Komorebi slash, slash Clace fandom server uh, is that, that what uh, Taylor said about that contest for energy drinks was a reference to Major Minor if my memory serves correctly. It's about to continue, but Isaac startles all of us with his unexpected return. Hey, looks like everything is good to go. Come with me. We're going somewhere special. You mean the VIP section? Aw, oh, what? How'd you know? The bartender down here gave it away. Said the only thing going on tonight was upstairs. Ah, oh, buzzkill. You're the only buzzkill here, man. Keeping us in the dark until the last possible second. Alright, alright, fine. Let's just go and have some fun. That's all you ever had to say, Isaac. Maybe start with that one next time. We all get up and start to follow Isaac. At least the time was finally upon us. No more teasing or secrecy. I'm not sure what he wanted to hide, but it kind of backfired on him. Is it Clace? Are we going to get to meet Clace? The boy? If he wanted to hype something up for my benefit, he didn't need to. I would have been fine with no outing at all and just staying home. But at least if this went well, I'd make another new friend. Isaac is a good judge of character, so I bet we'll meet someone cool. That's exactly what I said! 
That's exactly what I said earlier on playing through this game. Isaac is a good judge of character. At least everything, everyone he's introduced me to so far has been pretty awesome. With slight anxiety, we ascended the stairs to a floor reserved just for us. I have to admit, that does make me feel a little special. We ascend the stairs, and my anticipation rises alongside me. I've never been treated to something like this before, so I'm grateful. I only hope that I'm able to express that properly to our new friend. A friend of Isaac's is a friend of mine, at least in theory. Any addition to a group dynamic has the chance of going sour. However, I decide to be optimistic in the face of what could go wrong. Well, I'm sorry for the secrecy, but here we are. I didn't want to reveal what was happening until the last minute. Sometimes a surprise is necessary. Just felt like one of those days. Dude, we just talked about how the surprise was ruined. I mean, it's not really a surprise if everyone knows but us. Even their part-time bartender was in on this thing. Yeah, but I value the look on your face on your face more than theirs. That's why I kept it a secret from you and not the staff. Good or bad, a surprise is still a new experience, right? That's the logic you're using to save face. Don't even get me started on how bad that is. Just admit the fact that you handled this wrong right from the start. Hey, don't speak too soon. Look, I promise you'll understand why I've been acting so weird. There were a bunch of other people involved and a lot of strings attached. Strings? A bunch of other people? Yeah, I, I wasn't the only one who wanted to keep things secret. I was only playing by the rules that made everyone comfortable. Also, I was legally bound. There were forms involved. Yeah, because the law always keeps you in line. Is this about my mods again? They're legal. I'm being honest for once. Just oh, trust me, please. Heh, <laughs> said every liar ever. Bro, when the police come knocking, you can rub it in my face. But right now, the ball is in my court, and I plan to serve. A sportsman all of a sudden? You're acting so weird, like you're trying to be cool. Do not continue this. <laughs> and suddenly, it all falls into place. He just wants to impress his new boyfriend. His new what? Oh, who said that? Who said that? Another man pokes his head out, having been knelt behind the bar. Sorry, I was just organizing these bottles. Didn't expect the selection to be so artistic. Wine is the one that gets better with age, right? You could ask Isaac that one. He's pretty old. <laughs> Guess that's why he's finer than you. Are you sassing me? I came prepared. We all laugh and move closer to the bar. Isaac's friend looks familiar, but I can't put a finger on it. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, we got a brief glimpse of Clay's um, a portrait in his album cover when Dante plugged his phone in uh, when we were pre-gaming. So I can't remember if he had rainbow hair in that or not, um, but Delta is, is, Delta is on to something. Rather than dwell on that, I simply thank him for his generosity. 
No problem. I was actually supposed to do a signing up here. I guess Isaac told you about the event that was cancelled. Thankfully, we still had the venue booked, so I made use of it. Hmm, signing? Yeah, he has a following. Suddenly, we hear a high-pitched scream from behind us. It was obviously Taylor, but when we looked around, he acts oblivious. He simply lets out a deep breath and places his hands together. I am composed. Well, that's a new noise. Please, never make it again. <laughs> Taylor ignores the bait and steps even closer to the bar. Sorry, I didn't really recognize you. I'm Taylor, and apparently I'm also an idiot. Nah, don't worry. You're not an idiot. You'd be surprised how accurate those old comic books could be. Put on some glasses, change your hair, and nobody can recognize you. Can't hide that voice, though. We were just listening to you before we walked over here. I guess the whole surprise thing makes more sense now. Wait, I know you. Dante's eyes open wide as he approaches a sudden realization. And I know you too! Can you sign some stuff for me? Well, I have some spare copies of my books back at home. Bold of you to assume I didn't bring my own. I've been a fan since day one. Even have a first edition copy of Forlorn. And Taylor? I love your streams. Great company for those long trips. I'm able to piece together the evidence. That's Clay's! We were listening to his music just a few hours ago while we pre-gamed. I knew enough to know that he was a person of note in the music industry. Person of note, haha, <laughs> music, music pun. Didn't know we had any idols lurking in chat. Oh yeah, totally. I tell a lot of people about your channel too. You should let me join you as a guest while I'm in town. Sure! How long are you here for? A couple months, probably. Unless something comes up. I'll be easy to find, though. Isaac is going to add me to the group chat. Sounds good to me! So, what are the plans for tonight? That was certainly interesting. They've arranged a collab. I've seen crossovers like that, and they always end up in the news. A streamer and an idol playing games together? Everyone loved to see it. I'm not really familiar with the content that any of these people make, though. Dante's novels, Taylor's streams, Clay's music? Never experienced them. Until tonight! But I knew that was going to change. And at this rate, it'd be changing fast. I figured we'd each grab a bottle and just hang out. Excuse me. Trust me, the couches up here are super comfortable. Oh, and Isaac, are we still on for uh, Sunday? Yeah, of course. What's happening on Sunday? He's moving in with us. What? Surprise! <laughs> now I know why you kept all of this a secret. Can't have any objections if nobody knows anything. It's not like that! Okay, maybe it's kind of like that. But you should see the look on your face! Huh. <sighs> Worth it? Totally! So, what do you want to drink? I think I'll grab a bottle of fancy wine. Same. We've already had everything else. And it looks like those bottles are pretty expensive. Let's not drink too much, though. Don't want to run his tab through the roof. Oh, feel free. It's all bought out, so don't let it go to waste. You can even grab a few to take home if you want. Taylor steps forward and places his hands on Clay's shoulders. 
You are my best friend! Clace chuckles and grabs the bottle of wine he was holding earlier. Let's take a seat and see if we can make that mutual, all right? One long moment later, Clace holds a deck of cards, but not the kind you'd expect. It's a card game made for a night of drinking, with peculiar questions. Nothing held back. Talk about going off the deep end for a first impression. Looks like this one's for Taylor. At least, I think it suits him best. Yeah? What is it? Let's see here. What's the prettiest thing? Pettiest? What's the pettiest thing you've ever done? Oh, easy. You mean today or. Stalling rule? Objection sustained. You can't answer a question with another question. That defeats the entire purpose of the game, Taylor. Why did we make you the judge again? Just be thankful you didn't make me the executioner, man. Either way, stalling rule dictates that we get to ask another question. And not only that, but it doesn't have to be from a card. We can make it up. And if I refuse to answer? Shot. <laughs> what a terrible punishment. Not like I've been doing that all day anyway. Can I just take two shots and avoid this altogether? I thought, he s <laughs> I thought he said the question was going to be an easy one, but he wants the shots. <laughs> no. Objection sustained. Let's take it from the top. What's the pettiest thing you've ever done? Taylor places his head into his hands and sighs. You're all really out here trying to ruin me. Just... Oh, promise that you won't repeat this. It is embarrassing. Remember, sworn to secrecy. All right, all right. Well, I was, I was dating this guy. He was cool, I guess. We'd hang out and watch TV shows all day. It got to the point where I enjoyed the TV shows more than him. And you know my motto. Don't spend money if you don't have to. <laughs> That's his motto. <laughs> well, he's not the writer in this group. It's all right for his motto to not be elegant. I ended up dating him for a year before actually calling it off. Gave me time to watch what I wanted to. No subscriptions. We all exchanged glances, a little shocked. That's foul, man. Hey now, we all do stupid things when we're young. Oh, young? This was just last month. But come on, you saw the new season of Insomnia Cafe? Don't tell me you wouldn't do the same. It was so good. A man-child. We're in the company of a literal man-child. Like, your answers will be any better. I have dirt on all of you. Keep that in mind. Oh, you've made a big mistake now. Trash talking when we get to ask whatever we want. In that case, I'm gonna go with Delta. I know you wouldn't put me on the spot too bad. And my liver hurts. So I prefer a question I can answer. Can he do that? Yeah. Reversal rule. He either elects someone or we spin a bottle. Gives him a chance to minimize his embarrassment. Delta, don't minimize anything. Throw him under the bus, just like he does to us. We'll finally give him a taste of his own snarky medicine. Everybody looks at me. I guess I'll have to decide on what we ask Taylor. A bunch of questions flood the forefront of my mind, and I focus. <laughs> oh my goodness, daydreaming again. 
Thankfully, I've been gathering my thoughts. I'm ready for this. Let's see. What are the last 10 pages in your browser history? Who do you currently have a crush on? What is your biggest regret? Who is the most attractive person here? Have you ever cheated on a significant other? Ooh. I wouldn't want to know if Taylor has cheated. I feel like that is a dirty question. Who is the most attractive person here? Let's make this an easy one. Dumb question. It's me. And if you're gonna object to that, then it's Clay's. Nothing personal. He's just an entertainer like me. We need to look good. Awfully vain. Me? Nah. The world? Totally. It's their lofty standards that people like us need to meet. Doesn't matter how we feel about ourselves. It's how they feel about us that matters. Depressing. I can't imagine being under that much pressure. Yeah. You just need to look good on a book jacket. I'm on camera for over eight hours a day. Super high res, too. People keep taking pictures of my face, and it makes me super self-conscious. I know how he feels. It's the dumbest thing ever. But thanks for the compliment, Taylor. It means a lot. When I saw you on stream, I thought you looked good, too. We all exchange glances. Unsure of what happens next. <clears throat> the double question really threw a wrench in the momentum. Before continuing, Clay coughs to get all our attention. I went last, so that means Delta's next. But no more freedom. Gotta stick to what's in your hand. And Taylor isn't allowed to be questioned until after his next turn. And I nod. And I nod and look down at the cards in my hand. It does seem like each one would fit a specific person. Clay's targeted Taylor, so I'll try the same with my next move. Let's see. For Clay's, what fact about yourself do you hide from others? For Isaac, if your life was a sitcom, who would get the most laughs? And for Dante, describe the most attractive part of everyone present. <laughs> hmm. Let's get to know Clay's a little more. What fact about yourself do you hide from others? Ooh. Interesting. These questions are actually pretty good. I was hoping for something a little harder, actually. Wait, what exactly can you hide from other people? You're a pop star. The press is on your every move. Well, there are a couple places they can't follow me. Mainly into business meetings or the bedroom. The bedroom, huh? Taylor, no. We're not gonna focus- we're gonna focus on the business part. Most people don't know this, but I'm pretty difficult to work with. <laughs> I love how Taylor and Clay like, already understand each other. <laughs> Hilarious. Either that Either that or Clace is just really good at deflecting unwanted topics or questions. That's just another way of saying stubborn, right? Well, uh, a sugar-coated way, yeah. I, I mean, I usually know what I want to do with my music, so that means fighting off the label. They want their claws in everything. So you fight to keep your artistic integrity. Among other things, yeah. I fought for six months to get this vacation. That's wild. Wait, well, there's nothing wrong with you sticking to your values. When my publisher suggests something I don't like, I just say no. And they don't get mad at you? Nope. Dante looks a little concerned for a moment. Why? Does your label 
Clace looks embarrassed and rubs the back of his head. I, I think I'm just too sensitive sometimes. At least, that's what they say. I see. A small silence ensues before Clace continues the game. It looks like mm, Taylor is next. That means your immunity has worn off too. Oh, sweet! It's time to get my revenge. Bring it on, dude. I'm sure I'll never recover. Taylor inspects his cards and then whines audibly. Not fair! All of these are wholesome! Can't I just swap cards with somebody else? No. It won't kill you to be wholesome for once. It really might. Hey, make your move before I call the stalling rule. Fine, fine. Let's just see here. Um... Tell us about an embarrassing fact or experience. <laughs> At least this one has the potential to be juicy. Hmm. That one seems like revenge to me, man. Clace, no need to answer if you don't want to. Oh, it's fine. I just don't know my answer yet. I'm no stranger to scandals, so this casts a pretty wide net. Go ahead, take your time. But not too much. Remember, the rules apply to you, too. Are you sure you don't want some help with this one? I know you had some pictures and videos leaked. Taylor! Oh, yeah, but I killed it in those. Not embarrassing at all. Want me to start a timer? Oh, no need. Just let me figure out how to word it. He strikes a thinking pose, exactly like he is doing right now, before starting to speak. Well, I guess this one is just an embarrassing fact about myself, but I'm pretty sure I owe my entire career to a fluke. Wait, really? Yeah, well, it goes a bit deeper than that. I had my first vision when I was about to turn 13. You know, just like we all did. No, no real difference. I decide not to say anything. The odds of meeting someone without a vision are so low, I can't blame him. There's no real reason to assume that someone at a table of five didn't experience Komorebi. But in my vision, I'm older with a lot more experience. I had a lot of albums come out and a lot of songs to pick from. No way. Yeah, totally. I got started by stealing songs from my future self. I mean, I guess it's not really stealing since I still wrote them. But I entered the school's talent show that year with an arsenal. I got scouted right away, and I've been working ever since. They made you do all that since you were 13? Well, they adjusted my courses to incorporate singing and dancing. I wasn't doing more work. The work was just tailored a bit better. Interesting. I figured you went off to Idol Academy or something. <laughs> I did, but that came a little later. And you're, you're all milking ten questions out of one here. Maybe you should stick to the rules you're enforcing. <laughs> Idol Academy. <laughs> Like something out of anime. Fair enough. It's just an interesting story. Yeah, but a bit embarrassing, so I just keep it to myself. If I told everybody, then the bad press would start flowing. I'd hate to feel like I have to defend myself all the time. Don't think of it like that. If standing up for yourself was bad press, my reputation would be ruined. Don't let people walk all over you. Others will see the prince and follow suit. Dante leans forward, a little shocked. Taylor gave good advice? This really is a special day. We all laugh as the game continues. 
I had my doubts at first, but Dante was actually right. This night is proving to be just as special as it will be memorable. Yes, preserved forever in my map of fragments. Unless... Well... I was gonna say, unless we get a hangover and we really cannot even see this culmination fragment on the map, which, um, initially we couldn't. There were places for the, the, the top row of the, uh, what did they call them, pivotal fragments, there were the heart-to-hearts, and then there were the, the optional fragments in the group chat. But the culmination fragment itself didn't have uh, a, a little tile. So maybe it is not meant to be remembered. <laughs> we'll have to read Delta's journal to find out. I lay on one of the couches and stare up at the ceiling. Oh, it's that time of the night. Dante and Taylor do the same, while Clace and Isaac lie on the floor. It was basically unspoken, but we all decided to take a quick breather. Hey, how'd you two meet, anyway? This must have taken a lot of coordination. Not really. Yeah, we, uh, we met on Taylor's stream. Nothing crazy. He mentioned he was taking a break from work, so I invited him over. Seriously? I keep a pretty good eye on who's watching my stream. Even if they don't chat, I can still check out the user list. Can't say I've ever noticed your name pop up there. Oh, I don't use that name online. Or my legal name. The agency gave me a spare account so I could be anonymous. Isaac didn't even know who I really was until around a week ago. The agency gave him a spare account. I'm wondering if... If the way that he is identified online, at least on this streaming site, or perhaps globally online, is not within his control because like whenever you you can make you know unlimited user accounts on any website you choose as long as you have a different email for each of them um but the fact that clace had to receive a spare account from his agency in order to watch taylor's streams anonymously um perhaps hints at perhaps hints at the fact that <clears throat> people are not allowed to be anonymous online uh, in this day and age. Fascinating. Yeah, it's basically a burner account that influential people get. If he went around posting as himself, he'd never have peace of mind. The account basically vanishes if his identity is compromised. It sounds like a spy novel. Is that even fair? A license to do whatever you want online? Well, I'm still subject to changes in my score. So it's not like I used it for evil or anything. It's just an extra layer of security. <laughs> yeah, see, people are not allowed to be anonymous online. <laughs> Crazy. I think it's pretty cool. Good to know they care about your safety. Yeah, totally. They pitched it as a digital security guard. It keeps people at arm's length. But it's not always good. Because then I have to deceive people like Isaac. I was worried he'd hate me when I told him the truth. Any way you look at it, I lied to him for ages. But it's not like you wanted to. And you didn't have any ulterior motives either. True, but I still feel a little guilty. So, buying out the bar was more like a peace offering. I like to get things off to a good start. No secrets between friends. No place for those here. Yeah, not if we plan to be friends forever. Forever? Until death, in Isaac's words. We were getting a little sappy earlier. Death? The sappy? Yeah, we're a quirky bunch. 
and I don't plan on dying anytime soon. So I hope you're good with being friends for a long while. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah, of course. Clace laughs, but I can tell that he's a little weirded out. Yeah, when you first meet some... When you first meet someone, you want to feel them out before, like, making the big promises to be committed. But also, he's moving in with us. Well, well, that can also that can also be temporary. That can also be for a season of life. <laughs> but <laughs> friends until death. That is long haul. You know, I don't feel like an outsider anymore. That card game really helped me to get to know all of you. Before you came upstairs, I was worried you'd hate me. Nah. Isaac is a pretty good judge of character. When he vouched for you, I knew we were in for a good time. He was just being shady about everything until the last minute. Yeah, I'll, I'll take responsibility for that one. I hope you can understand why we needed some privacy. He looks to the side, like he's a little shy about what he'll say next. I'd also like to request that you offer me more during my stay. More privacy? Is that what he... <laughs> he looks... He looks... He looks happy about that request, but he's requesting more privacy, which is kind of... Um... <laughs> not... Okay. Given that he is a big celebrity, it's not that weird of a request to make. Um, in that context. <laughs> But it is, it is a serious request, and one to be respected. Of course. So, just to get things straight, you're on a small hiatus from your musical career? Yeah, just wrapped up my tour, so it seemed fitting. And I don't need to start a new album for a while yet. Combine both of those facts, and boom, freedom. We're gonna make the most of it, too. Don't want you looking back on this with any regrets. Yeah, definitely. Thanks, Isaac. For everything. While they talk, I get off the couch and slowly walk away. Time to zone out! I let them know that I'm just taking a quick breather. It's been a wild night. It's time to get by myself in a corner and zone out. Let's go out on the balcony there. As I continue to walk, I hear their laughs slowly dissipate, replaced by music. I look off the railing and down to the first floor. Everyone seems to be having the time of their life tonight. Makes me wonder if any of them knew what was going on up here. Chaos would probably ensue if they knew that Clace was mere feet away. I don't know much about him but I know that he could easily draw a crowd. That's probably the most important quality for someone in his line of work. Experience heart-to-heart -heart fragment, Clace 1. Yes. I stand in front of the railing, watching the activity on the dance floor. It hasn't been too long since I arrived, but I'm starting to feel a sense of home. <laughs> a big overarching theme here. Delta is beginning to feel at home. <laughs> There's just something about this place and these people. I feel at ease. So do I, Delta. So do I. I'm, evil a I'm even able to establish a rapport with people I've never met. It's like the weight that hindered me back at home was completely eliminated. This could be a honeymoon period, of course, but I'm going to enjoy every second. Clace approaches me, startling me out of my reverie. Hey, how are you holding up? This is the first time I've seen you away from the rest of the group. We're all having a blast, you know. I hope you feel the same way.
Which of these... Which of these is the more flirtatious option? This one has hearts, but this one has a harp. And... You know, oh, let's try it, let's try it. Mm. Well, maybe this is in a way... Oh, see, I'm really stretching on this one, but this one could be interpreted as... As... As me showing that I'm interested in getting together with someone else from the group, not with Clay's. Which, when I put it that way, seems a little bit, um... I, I don't know. Oh, well, let's go for the one more with hearts. Whenever. Well, it's a lot, it's a lot better now that I'm alone with you. Um, what? Are you flirting with me? That's never been one of my strong suits, Delta. But I, I do think you're cool. That's why I decided to come check on you. He gives me a soft smile before taking another sip of his drink. I thank him for coming over to check on me, and I expect him to leave. Much to my surprise, however, he stays beside me, enjoying my company. We watch the dance floor together, and I'm a little flattered. Someone of his status choosing to spend time with me? As that thought consumes my mind, I can't help but ask him. <laughs> status? And what status do you mean exactly? People say that all the time, but they have no idea what this industry is like. I can guarantee that you'd outrank me tenfold if we compared our scores. People like me... Artists, I mean, are known for having awful scores. Art has always been about challenging the status quo. At least to me. The system hates that, and every new song is a nosedive for my score. I tell him that I'm not talking about the system. I'm talking about his fame and fortune as a pop star. However, I'm a bit surprised that his score is low. Oh, jeez. Now I'm embarrassed for going off on a tangent. Whenever somebody mentions status, I, I always think about the system. We're just numbers in a computer. Fame and fortune will always come a second to that. He takes another sip of his drink. It goes against my values to treat one group of people better than another, too. So, this status you're talking about? It's from the outside looking in. When I watch you and your friends, I'm actually pretty jealous. <laughs> He's envious of us? I ask him to elaborate. At this point, I think the alcohol is elaborating, not me. But I th everybody dancing down there, I bet they wish they could be up here. They'd probably even abandon their friends and family for a life of luxury. And by the time they regret it, it'll already be too late. Once you get into a world like this, there's no getting out. You're just there, watching them and wanting to go back. You know, I could tell that you and your friends were worried. It was clear. You didn't really know if you'd fit in with me or not. But honestly, I, I was terrified that I wouldn't fit in with you. He scoffs. I said I wanted to have a good time, and now I'm bringing you down. Let's make a deal, all right? Drop the whole status thing between us. That's not something I can ask of them, but I know I can ask it of you. He motions toward the dance floor, and I understand what he means. Especially now that people are starting to recognize his face. They look up from the dance floor, taking pictures of us. Oh no! <laughs> this night might get cut short. Just like they want to be up here, I want to be down there. That velvet rope keeps me in just as much as it keeps them out. For my safety, they always say. Like I can't take care of myself. But, I hope that you and your friends can change that. 
I don't have to be up here alone anymore. I can be with all of you. Hold on, let me, let me get this over with. It's rude to keep an audience hanging. He leans over the railing a bit, blowing a kiss to the crowd. With a smile and a little pose for the photos, it seems like his work is done. They cheer, but it's peculiar. Like his personality changed just for the crowd. Well then, let's get away from all those prying eyes. If I'm not mistaken, you owe me a few facts about yourself. I nod and follow him back to the core area of the VIP deck. We sit down across from each other and he leans back, stretching. Dante, Taylor, and Isaac are still hanging out. Their distance provides us with privacy. He rests his empty glass on the table between us and then stares at me. I can tell he's trying to get a read on me, like he can tell just from sight. With a quick shrug, I rest back in my chair and wait for him to speak. There's something different about you. Maybe it's because we're both fish out of water here. Lost and clueless, but lost and clueless together, right? Another smile. I give him one in return. Bonding over a shared struggle makes sense to me. Yeah, we are both new people in this town. New fish. <laughs> new fish. Fish out of water. It's not easy moving to a place you know almost nothing about. <laughs> so, why did you move, exactly? I know your friends here, and Isaac offered you a room, but yeah. Are you running away from something? Looking for something new? I tell him that it's a mix of both, honestly. At home, I felt held back. I needed a big change and more freedom. I also don't know what I want in life, so I guess it's an excuse to find myself. Find yourself? Yeah, I've been there, and it's not really what you'd think. Sometimes finding yourself just means realizing how lost you really are. In the face of something like that, blissful ignorance almost seems preferable. It might just be the alcohol, but that sounded rather profound. Clace immediately leans forward, giggling at what he said. I am so putting that in my next song. Look, we just met and you're already inspiring me. Let's have another drink, alright? I like where this is going. He quickly scurries to the bar. Oh, scurries. It's just the cutest word ever. And prepares two glasses of wine. Carefully walking back, he tries his best not to spill anything. Sitting down with a smile, he places the drinks on the table. Thanks for opening up to me, by the way. It's enough to know your reasoning. I shouldn't pry for specifics. If I keep making you talk about your past, you'll never move on from it. That's deep. That's deep. Sometimes I am at an impasse as to whether to talk about something that's bothering me or to not talk about it. Because after I talk about it a lot, sometimes talking about it keeps me from moving on from it. So, let's have a drink to the future, alright? And not the Como Rebbe, but the future we make for ourselves. No need to base our lives on all that metaphysical nonsense. I raise my glass, and we drink in sync with one another. It is time to tell Clace that I am visionless. <laughs> yes, it is! I call it! However, when we put the glasses down, I have to come clean. This is when I let him know that I've never experienced Komorebi. Oh, really? Oh, well, even better. From what I've seen, 
people like you leave, live happier lives. I've never understood all that counselor nonsense. I totally agree, and thank him for his point of view. If anything, it seems like the remnants of a dead system. And people our age have long since come to terms with Komarebi. And I'm kind of surprised that... I'm, okay. From what we've heard about this world, um, the need for mental health support for people without visions ha has clearly been necessary. But I would think... Because people were doing perfectly fine without visions until Komorebi arrived, until the Fire Nation uh, arrived. <laughs> until the Fire Nation attacked, that's how it goes. Um, but the people who didn't have visions, even after Komorebi arrived, would have got along, gotten along quite fine. But then I guess they would have been replaced with a new generation that didn't have visions, and they would have been replaced with a new generation that didn't have visions. And all along, they would have maybe thought that Komarebi was just a temporary thing, or they didn't yet acknowledge the need to band together and support each other in this world where 99.1% of people have, have visions. Um, so I can see why the need to, to force people to, uh, to go to counseling if they didn't have visions. I can see how that could have arisen. Um, but Delta says people our age have long since come to terms with Komarebi. But while we're on the subject, I had to ask him, what did he see in his vision? Did he see fame and fortune? I know he had songs in his head, but what else did he glean? He immediately looks taken aback and his, excuse me, his ears perk up. Yeah, it's, it seems that people are extremely sensitive or private about their visions, which is a fascinating a fascinating uh, uh, culture, a fascinating s social construct. He immediately looks taken aback and his ears perk up. He looks worried and blushes softly as he adjusts his scarf. Such a mixed reaction. I can't tell if I did something bad or not. That's a, th a third date kind of conversation, you know? But I doubt this is the last time we'll be hanging out together. Just put that one on the back burner, at least for now, please. Does that mean we can count this as our first date? <laughs> Smooth, but actually I'm not really allowed to date. They say a single guy gets more attention from the fans. I know they're really after money, but I can't exactly fight the label. Wait, the industry controls his personal life? That doesn't sound good. Although it does explain why his social skills are rough around the edges. If this really is his first group of friends, then I'm glad to be a part of it. Although... He smirks. I keep forgetting that I'm not bound by their rules during this hiatus. Like, I know I am, but it hasn't really registered in my head yet. They gave me this little break in order to seal a deal in the making. A deal? Yeah, after this break, I owe them five albums over ten years. My last contract ran its course, so I actually had ground to negotiate. I'm giving them so much of my life, I guess I just wanted some of it back in return. There's something about all of this that seems so depressing. He's able to say it with a smile, however, like it's normal to him. But I know that during this break, I'll make bonds that last a lifetime. The next ten years will be nothing if I have all of you by my side. 
I was worried, but now I have some much needed backup. We both smile at each other and he blushes once more. I couldn't put my finger on it, but that seemed like the perfect end to our talk. Both standing up at the same time, it was almost like that feeling was mutual. It seems as if we're both in sync. Like he said before, fish out of water. Holding out his glass, he simply repeats the earlier saying, Remember, lost and clueless. But lost and clueless together. As I say that, I tap my glass against his. With a quick smile, he returns to the rest of the group. Everyone seems to be getting along as I head back to the group. Clay slowly slips, sips, sips on his glass of wine. Slipping would be, would be not good. And everyone mingles with each other. That breather definitely helped. I can't party as hard as everyone else, it seems. Welcome back. Was starting to worry you ditch us. Not everybody can handle a night like this. No hard feelings if that's the case, of course. Oh, there'd definitely be hard feelings. Isaac planned this night just for you, remember? <laughs> Pressure? That's not even true. He planned the night around Clay's, too. Makes me feel a little inadequate. I never got a party like this when I joined the group. Yeah, I save it for the people who are worth it. Mean. Justified, actually. Clay finishes his glass of wine and places it down, emitting a loud noise. This gets all of our attention, and the bickering quickly stops. What do you think we should do next? There's still a few hours before last call. Good question. We all exchange glances, unsure of what to do. No one mentions anything, so place changes the subject. I may have blown my cover a little earlier, by the way. We should probably sneak out the back entrance when we leave. That's fine with me. I warned everybody that we might attract some attention. What should we do if everyone starts crowding you? I don't think it will be an issue, but just stay by my side. I can help keep you safe if anything escalates. Actually, I figured we'd be the ones protecting you. <laughs> yeah, right. The crowd would eat you alive. I'm used to this, so if it comes down to it, just follow my lead. It doesn't happen too often though. Not with the new point penalties. The new what? Yeah. Public scene, big uproar, obstructing paths. If they notice us, they'll probably just watch from a distance. Pestering a public figure can net you like 10 different penalties. Really? And that's been set in stone? That's not just one of the glitches happening lately? Convenient excuse, don't you think? Crack down harder and blame it on a glitch? Oh, is it tinfoil hat time? Trust me, I've heard every possible theory about Argus. The world was dealt a bad hand and they just wanted to help. That's all. You should hear what some of the people say to me at work. They have no problem trash talking the company they're giving money to. Well, I mean, we're not just giving them money, we're giving them the freedom to control our lives. I know it's for the greater good, but it's still strict. You can still do whatever you want, though. You're not tied down. At the end of the day, you're still in control of your score. Yeah, but there's a lot of incentive to be an obedient drone. A bad score can literally destroy your life and your social status. Well, not always. What do you mean? My score is pretty awful, especially with all the partying I do on tour. That is so not fair. Tank your score and they still let you buy out a bar? If any normal person tried that, they'd just be laughed away. 
So, the scores aren't as absolute as we think. I mean, as far as theories go, that's pretty common. But you can't say that's part of Argus's game. Notable people have always been given special treatment. It's not like that's a new addition to our society. Nothing changed. Shouldn't it, though? That's a bit too deep for me. No sense wasting time on something you can't change. It's just wishful thinking. Like trying to defy your vision. That doesn't mean you should just sit back and give up. As long as you believe in your cause, a losing battle can still be worth fighting. You know, on this topic, something that really changed the way I look at um, uh, conflicts in store. Okay, here, this is a humongous tangent, but since they're talking about, can you win the battle? What can you do if you can't win the battle? Taylor says a losing battle can still be worth fighting. Um, I love how in, in Ruby, towards one of the later seasons, um, um, oh yeah, there are going to be some mild spoilers about Ruby here. <laughs> um, I'll omit names. Um, so towards one of the later seasons, the, one of the main characters realizes that, or realizes, decides, um, in light of new information, that they can't win the battle in the way that they thought they could. In fact, she thinks it's hopeless. Um, so then she decides to piv <clears throat> pivot and change her objective and make it uh, either delaying their, um, delaying their loss for as long as possible and or saving as many lives as possible. Um, which, I don't know, I've never just, I've just never seen that idea put forward so clearly. Um, but clearly that, that's what has to happen if you want to have any chance of coming back in the long haul. You need to go underground, become a rebel army, or, or whatever. Um, and maybe that's what the Zeros are doing. They're waiting for a revolution, but they've decided that they need to bide their time and, um, and delay their demise for as long as possible. Um, but yeah, as long as you believe in your cause, a losing battle can still be worth fighting. Y yeah, I, yeah, I kind of agree with that. Either that, or you need to change your strategy or change your objective to something that is achievable. Just don't, don't go for a target that is indestructible, like Argus. <laughs> you guys flip-flop way too much on whether or not you believe your visions. Us and the rest of the world, Isaac. We weren't all given a bright one like you were. Everybody looks shocked and exchanges glances. Yeah, given how Clace um, reacted when we asked him about his vision, ooh, for for Dante to be um, to be just like referring to Isaac's vision like that just seems like an invasion of privacy. I know alcohol was at play, but Dante just made a big mistake, revealing facts about another person's vision. Really bad move. I didn't have a vision, but I knew that they were super intimate. Sharing your vision with someone else was an expression of trust. To have them speak about it to others, it was a bit of a betrayal. You may think it's bright from what I told you, but unless you're all there beside me, it'll feel hollow. When things get tough, the hope that I can change it keeps me going. Dante shakes his head upon realizing his mistake. I'm sorry, Isaac. I didn't mean to speak for you. It's fine. I'm among friends. I would trust all of you with this stuff. Just not now. That's fair. Anyway, let's go back to Taylor. You've heard every theory. What are some of the worst? Aliens. 
Excuse me? People actually believe that? Oh, totally. I see it everywhere. Whenever something weird happens, people on the internet will say aliens. And I do have to admit, Komorebi is pretty high up there on the weird scale. Yeah, but... Aliens? Hey, I never said I believed it. I think the deterrent theory is way better. The what? I know about that one, actually. Right before the first visions, world tensions were high. Everyone thought we were moments away from all-out war. Then, all of a sudden, Komarebi steps in. We don't have to care about fighting each other anymore. We have a new common enemy. The future. Yeah, that makes sense to me. And it's not something you can take, like a nation. And it's not something you can force, like an ideal. It brought about peace, whether random or created. That's still the case. I don't think I can buy the theory that someone created Komorebi. It would be impossible to manufacture something like that, right? I don't know about that one. There's always a scientist that tries to play God, you know? Like I said, I'm more inclined to believe that theory. Doesn't mean I'm... believe it. That's fair. I did hear about some crazy experiments in Switzerland. Yeah, they're always up to something over there. I know they're obsessed with contacting another universe for a while. Did that ever go anywhere? I don't think we were worthy of a response. Like Taylor joked about, this is probably just the darkest timeline. They take one look at what we have to put up with and run the other way. That's so depressing. I have a cure for that. Taylor holds up a bottle of booze, implying that it's time to drink more. Besides, it's a waste of time to focus on questions that have no answer. Like, why do scissors come in packages that require scissors to open? I'm buying a pair! That obviously means I don't have one to use. Why don't you just use a kitchen knife to open it? What? We have like 10 knives in the kitchen drawer. You do know that you don't need to use scissors, right? But there's a little picture of scissors next to the dotted line. Everyone stares at Taylor. Is it okay if I just start drinking again? I mean, we're here to have fun, not rip into Taylor. You know what? You are right. But I do appreciate talking about more real issues. Even if we'll never know the truth, it's still healthy to talk about. Hey, I'll drink to that one. It can't be all fun and games, even if we want it to be. Honestly, this is one of the best nights I've ever had. You must not have much freedom when you're on tour. Nah, I'm always at arm's length from one person or another. But I told them I wanted to be left alone while I'm on this hiatus. At least, it'll give me the chance to prove that I can care for myself. And even if you wouldn't, or couldn't, we'd be there for you. How about we grab some bottles and head back to my place? Sounds good to me. Just remember what I said about taking the back door. Didn't you know you guys had that kind of relationship? <laughs> he met the nightclub, you absolute idiot! Taylor smirks without saying another word. A moment later, we all scurry toward the bar. I grab a few bottles of whatever stands out to me. Like a kid in a candy store is a pretty apt expression. Especially for Taylor, who seems overwhelmed by the possibilities. He keeps taking a bottle, putting it back, and then taking another one. We didn't leave him behind. We waited for him to choose before leaving. It's like me, I'm indecisive. <laughs> Free was certainly the best price of all.
we scurried down the streets, carrying more alcohol than we could ever drink. But it was all paid for, so there was no point in letting it go to waste. Actually, we'd be entirely stocked up for our New Year's Eve party. Damn, they're really watching us, huh? Kinda embarrassing. They're gonna think we're alcoholics. Well, if you're not, you've sure fooled me. I look at the other side of the street. People watch from a distance. The flash of their cameras is annoying, but not too overwhelming. Shouldn't this make our scores go down? <laughs> although, although I, I did comment earlier about how, um, how facial recognition might, seems to be absent from this world. Like, people actually have to, you, you actually have to interact directly with a system that is connected to Argus, the system, a system that is connected to the big S system in order for your score to go down. Um, um, because we had that whole conversation with Kiron, the Zero, and but everyone behaved as if Argus wasn't going to find out unless we told someone about that, um, like the counselor. Um, but if people are posting pictures of us on social media, like, yeah, I think that's going to make our scores go down, guys. <laughs> Clace was right. They won't approach us due to the system. How do you operate under this much pressure, Clace? There's so many eyes on me, I can't help but feel violated. You get used to it. The number one thing is remembering that they like you. They watch out of respect and admiration, not to judge. Typically, I'd assume you're right, but I imagine you don't walk down the street like this too often. I mean, we, we look like we just robbed a dozen liquor stores. We kind of did. I was just joking about buying it out. What? I tried to make a joke. Dude! Don't do that! You almost gave me a heart attack! <laughs> nah, I'd never do that. It'd be way too boring without you. I keep looking at the other side of the street. The crowd grows. Isaac was right after all. We definitely got some attention. Thankfully, I made sure to dress nice and act confident. Really? Good to know I made a nice first... Before he can finish, we hear a bottle of booze hit the ground. It shatters, and I feel some drops splash against my ankles. We turn around, and Dante stares at us. Clearly his fault. We will never mention this again. The crowd that was watching us laughs, like a studio audience. It's so weird, like they can't cross the divide between us. The system is keeping us apart, despite our desires. I'd agree, but you know you'll just end up dropping more. You're next level clumsy, and now it's embarrassing me. Nothing wrong with getting embarrassed. It'll keep your ego in check. Me? Ego? It's undeniable. Dante struggles to rearrange the bottles in his hands. We stand by and wait for him, but we don't clean up the glass. One of the automated drones would be by to fix it in minutes, for sure. You need some help? <laughs> it's Kiron! <laughs> We're all shocked to attention and look at the other, other side of the road. Someone walks over, but it's not just anybody. We know this guy. Figured they weren't gonna jump in and lend a hand. Looks like they're scared of getting in trouble. Intimidated, even. I intimidated? Why? 
No idea. I'm just the messenger. But I saw a friend in need and ran to help. Guess the system doesn't like good Samaritans. Well, it's not that. Our friend here is kind of famous, so they want pictures. And the system is actually protecting us from a stampede. Oh, that's right. So... So, I mean... I mean, okay, so it, it's, it looks undeniably bad to be carrying a, a ton of liquor down the street in the middle of the night. But also, Place is with us. He's, a, he's an idol. Um, so, right, it's, it's this mix of, like, I guess, awe and bewilderment at, like, what is happening with these guys, this celebrity and four friends, one of whom just dropped a bottle of booze on the sidewalk. Famous? Really? Been here a, for a day, and I'm already making connections. They'd be super jealous back at home. You know, if we care about that kind of stuff. He kneels down beside the broken glass. Running a couple fingers through the pool of booze, he then tastes it. We all look at each other, confused and a bit concerned about health risks. You... drink this stuff? Y yeah. It tastes... disgusting. Yeah, but it makes us happy. Is this Argus's doing? make you happy with drinks so you don't fight back? What? Just some food for thought. Or drinks for thought, I guess. Here, let me have some of that. He motions toward Dante and holds out a hand. Dante looks at all of us, confused, before giving Zero some bottles. Zero's not his name. We need to stop calling him that. Or maybe that was a typo. Um, me giving the Zero some models, I don't know. Carrying them with relative ease, he shrugs, unsure of what to do next. Where are we going? Home. Well, I don't want to intrude on anything. I'll just help you carry the bottles and then go on my way. Let's call it even for the food you've been giving me. Sounds fair. Are you sure we won't get in trouble? No, but it doesn't matter anyway. Look at all the people taking photos with us. Any chance that we wouldn't get caught is long gone. Is it actually a crime to talk to a zero? Well, it's a crime for them to sneak into the city. I imagine it's against the rules by association. If we get docked points, well, let's just contest it. Fair. The system really keeps you all apart, huh? He tilts his head to the people on the other side of the street. It looks like both sides are worried about their score. Common sense tells me that you could coexist just fine. Common sense? Well, not a lot of city folk have that. But thanks for the help. I appreciate it. You could show your appreciation by actually talking to me. Every person I meet, it, it's always score this and points that. I don't care about those. Let me just make that crystal clear. Well, you could tell us about yourself. We have a bit of a walk ahead of us. At least an hour. <sighs> That's a long walk. I want to hear about the famous dude first. What did he do? Suck up to Argus the most? Hey! Not really. My score is terrible. But I like to sing and dance, and people like to listen and watch. I'm on a break now, but I usually just travel the world and perform. Sounds stressful. You have no idea. 
I'd suggest easing up on the Argus hate, though. There's no need to draw attention to yourself. Yeah. You want to fit in as much as possible. Hard to do that when I can't enter any buildings. I'm supposed to have a phone with a special chip in it? I don't even have any money. How am I supposed to fit in? Aren't you here with your friends to fight that, though? You know, so you can all have access and stuff? Nah. They're here to fight it. I'm here to see the sights and learn about the city. There's a lot less green around here. It's super depressing. Suddenly, I remember the pamphlets that I was shown earlier today. <laughs> this might be a good time to get more information from the Zero. Something told me we wouldn't make a habit of hanging out. What is that? Is, is, is that inverse foreshadowing? Because I feel like he's here to stay as, as a character in the game. <laughs> I decide to ask him, in an effort to make productive conversation. The perspective of an outsider is always good. It challenges your views. He seems to dislike Argus, but does he really believe the things I read? Pamphlets? Wait, which ones are you talking about? I let him know what I've heard. They believe that Argus is responsible for Komorebi. And not only that, but they believe Komorebi disproves free will. Well, that's ridiculous. Argus must have planted those to make us look bad. We did bring some reading material, but none as stupid as that. What did you bring, exactly? You know, just stuff about the impending land crisis. We grow in numbers while your cities grow in size. Less food and more people. A pretty bad combination. I didn't know it was so severe. It's definitely going down that route, yeah. But it's best to take care of it before it becomes a problem. You know. We just have foresight? Figured you'd all be used to that by now. <laughs> Though, I guess everyone focuses on potential futures. Kinda stupid when there's a real one right in front of your noses. One look at a zero colony and you'd be on my side. I guarantee it. Huh. I see. Well, thanks for helping. And I hope you enjoy your time in the city. Of course. It's nice to have a change of pace. And if you want to help in return, just tell people we aren't all that bad. If they believe Argus that much, we'll have no chance. Especially if they're starting to fall for those fake pamphlets. Whoever made them, it's clearly just an attempt to undermine. Honestly, that's the best way to ruin somebody. Attack their credibility until it doesn't even matter if they speak the truth. Remove our willingness to hear so we don't care what you have to say. Exactly. But like I said, it feels like a losing battle. Maybe you should share some of that happy juice with me. He lets out a soft laugh, and we're uncertain if he's serious or not. But since we've been walking the entire time, we've lost the crowd. The return to privacy and anonymity was a welcome one, to say the least. How much further is it? Maybe five more minutes? <laughs> Alright. This is turning into quite the workout. I'm thankful that I got to make some new friends, though. Likewise. And you're moving in with Isaac, right? Guess I'll have to come visit more often. Oh, that'd be awesome. But I can come to your place for that stream we talked about. I think a lot of people would be interested in watching it. You're telling me. Just be warned that I say a lot of stupid stuff. You kind of have to turn off your filter to fill dead air. I watch you all the time. Trust me, I know. Let's settle on a date and time. 
and I'll get them to make a press release. The more hype we can build leading up to it, the better. Sound good? More than good. I never watched Taylor, but this has me interested. Yeah, you never watch. You just leech off my viewers. It's a good life. We laugh as we continue to walk home. Zero is rather quiet, though. Oh, from seeing the number of times that we have seen just Zero as his name, um, I think it's safe to assume that it's that it's not a typo. This is just what Delta is calling them. Him. He's probably just not sure where he fits in, but we still appreciate the help. By the time we make it back home, he barely says another word. When we enter, Zero stays outside. He rests the booze he carried on the ground, and we move it inside. It takes a couple trips outside to transport it, but we eventually get the job done. Hey, uh, it doesn't look like he's leaving. Taylor peeks through the window. It's a bit odd on both Taylor and the Zero's part. <laughs> well, uh, that's a little odd. I'll go talk to him for a few minutes. Y you can all relax, I won't be gone long. Sounds good to me. Yeah, I'm getting pretty sleepy over here. Fair enough, I'll try to hurry. You should mingle for a bit. No more prying eyes around. I'll show you to your room as soon as I get back. I'll start the timer. As Isaac steps outside, the rest of us gather together. We sit down on the couch in unison and let out loud sighs. Oh, I'm getting old. Getting? Huh, funny. Dude, you're 23. You're not old, you're just dramatic. Speaking of dramatic, you sure know how to draw a, cloud, a crowd, Clace. I was worried they'd cave and start swarming us. Nah, they usually behave. Even without the system, I'm sure they'd still respect me. The relationship I have with my fans is certainly... unique. It sure seems that way. Watching them stare at us felt so surreal. Hopefully it doesn't happen again. Well, even if it does, you, you get used to it. But I'd be down to go somewhere more private next weekend. And it might be a good idea to avoid that zero if we can. Why not hit up the Wayfarer? It's pretty dead in there. And I love the Atmo. Oh, what's that? A pub. And a pretty good one. Cheap drinks, and they don't mind pouring extra. Sounds good to me. Honestly, a nightclub may not have been the best first choice. I hope you can forgive me for what happened after we left. And don't worry about it, Clace. And I heard you suggest the Wayfarer. I am so down. After tonight, I could definitely use a more relaxed outing. Looks like Isaac is back and kept his word of not being gone for long. He sits down on the couch with the rest of us and yawns. I'm just going to die here now. I think I've used up my social energy. It's all over for me. You still have to show me to my room. All over. I can show you if you'd like. We cleaned that room together, and now I know why. But I'm curious, where's all your luggage at? Oh, someone is gonna bring it over tomorrow. They'll take care of everything, so don't worry. Are we just gonna let Isaac pass out there? No way, this is my couch even if I have to carry him to his room. So romantic. Why not just take his bed? I'll never do that again. My back is still recovering. Wait, you've slept in his bed before? 
Upon hearing that, Isaac immediately jumps out of his seat. All right, it's time. If you're showing Clace to his room, I'll stick with Delta. There's something I wanted to talk about anyways. Works for me. Then Taylor gets his couch. And just to set this in stone, we're going to the Wayfarer next weekend. Sounds good to me. Does Friday work for all of you? Yeah, I'm wide open. Also, I'll make us all breakfast. I assume your kitchen is fully stocked? With the essentials, yeah. But you don't have to do that. Of course I don't. I'm just choosing to. This all means a lot to me, so I want to help out. It was great to finally meet you too. Well, all of you. He looks at me and gives me a soft smile. I guess that's our cue. See you all in the morning. Sure thing. Taylor, if you need more blankets or anything, we glance over at Taylor and he's fast asleep on the couch. I guess he wasn't exaggerating when he said how tired he was. As much as I wanted this night to last forever, it was time to sleep. Oh, guess we have to keep it down now. He gets really angry if he loses his beauty sleep. Come on, Delta, let's go somewhere more private. I nod and start to walk toward my room. I'm not sure what he wants to talk about, but it can't be anything bad. It's probably related to the night he's planned, if I enjoyed it, and stuff like that. I have been playing and speaking and narrating for a long time. I'm ready for a break. Like, right after this conversation, if the fragment is not over. <laughs> as soon as we get to my room, I sit down on the bed. Isaac follows suit, sitting down beside me, but also keeping his distance. He has a sense of familiarity to this otherwise bland and lifeless room. I didn't have enough space to bring everything with me. A lot of stuff, like my computer and bed, had to stay behind. Oh, leaving behind the computer? Impossible. <laughs> maybe, it's a, maybe it's a tower computer and he had to uh, travel by plane. But I guess it's not a fresh start if you don't shed a little bit. So, did you have fun? What did you think of the plans I made? Oh, they involved you, so they were pretty much perfect. <laughs> yeah, this one is for another time. It's for another time. At least fly a little bit more by me next time. I was in the dark all week. They involved you, so they were pretty much perfect. Wait, all it takes is me? I definitely got too ambitious then. Oh well, at least next weekend will be low effort. Not that there's anything wrong with ambition. Though, I guess it's one of those in moderation things. You could easily go too far. Even Argus was started by someone with high hopes. He rubs the back of his head a little bit, like he's nervous. I hope we don't get docked too many points for what happened tonight. Community service wasn't how I planned to spend the rest of my year. We didn't even do anything wrong. Why do I feel so guilty? Shaking his head, he lets out a dramatic sigh. Everyone keeps inheriting such flawed ideals these days. Our minds are sewn shut before we even have the chance to open them. It makes us scared of change, scared of things that are good. The world was never reinvented by people who thought inside the box, Delta. But try as hard as I can, the envelope always pushes back. Rules, guidelines, scores, they just foil progress. I nod, unsure of where he's going with this. But I imagine that his score means more to him than others. He works for Argus after all, the people who govern everything getting on their bad side would probably cause endless worry. 
Yet here he sits, with a look of realization on his face rather than fear. Like the look of a man who just realized what needed to be done. I think we'll, have, we'll need to have a proper conversation about all that nonsense, especially with everything that's been going on the past few days. That Zero seems to like us, but I can't blame him. He gives me a, a thumbs up and a wide smirk. We're just the coolest. We both laugh, and then he inches a bit closer. For real though, people getting in trouble for this kind of thing, people get in trouble for this kind of thing, but if we do, I want to fight it, and I'll want your help to do that too. Talking to a zero shouldn't have to damage our lives. I agree. He approached us, and the interaction was harmless. As long as no harm was done, I don't think we should get in trouble. Of course, letting one thing slide can easily turn into an avalanche. In fact, I'm willing to fight for a world where no one cares about that stuff. And if Argus just uses that to make an example out of me, well, at least I tried. Everyone else just accepts their punishment without asking questions. It's true. People can easily become blind to the status quo. Jump through enough hoops and eventually you'll just get used to it. That's what Argus did. Taught us all to jump without asking why. I am wondering if Delta is saying this out loud to Isaac. I I really thought that like all that all of the dialogue bubbles that have been coming from you know, the bottom of the screen were just internal monologue, and it's only when when the choices, the choice boxes come up that that's when we're actually speaking aloud. But honestly, this would be a very odd and one-sided conversation if I wasn't if I wasn't saying these things to Isaac. <laughs> anyway, I hate to end this night on a sour note. I'm just drunk venting, and there's no need to do that right now. I, I came in here to, to thank you for tonight, and let you know that I'm here. I know things are getting off to a great start, but I'm still here. If you're ever lonely, scared, or thinking of home, just let me know. I haven't been this motivated in years, and it's all thanks to your arrival. He places his hands in mine. I've got your back. I guess I just wanted to make that clear. At the end of the day, this give and take is all we really have. But you know what? It's all we really need. Someone there to help us when things go bad. Somewhere to direct us when we start feeling lost. I'm trying to buy time now since I'm super nervous, but... I guess this is one of those things that I just need to get over with. Especially now that the booze has shot my confidence sky high. What's coming? What is coming? <laughs> Without another word, he leans forward and kisses me on the cheek. When he pulls back, his face is bright red. I've never seen him like this before. It's not a bad thing, though. I squeeze his hands with a smile before letting go. Enjoy your new life, Delta. And here's to a better tomorrow. He leaves the room happier than he'd been all night. It must have been a relief that things went off mostly without a hitch. I plug in my phone, then lay in bed and stare up at the ceiling. It's almost been a week, but this still doesn't feel like my bed. I wonder when that will change and what might spark that change. The fact that we can make anywhere feel like home is rather peculiar. It just might take some more time. My eyelids feel heavy, and I soon succumb to fatigue. The very same fatigue that I fought off in Isaac's car when I first arrived. But I feel like this time, I can let it get the better of me. I deserve it, after all. I sleep, 
despite my worry that the tomorrow I greet may not be better. <laughs> because, vision or not, we were all united in our fear of what would happen next. <sighs> Thank you for playing the demo of Como Revy. <clears throat> The game will launch in 2023 on Steam and Nintendo Switch. Oh, 2023, so long to wait. So long. Make sure to follow at Clace on Twitter or use hashtag Komorebi game. There is also a Discord server with a link in the included readme file. Until next time. Fade to black. Is it fading? Is it fading? I feel like it faded a little bit, but it's not. Okay, yeah, yeah, it, it's not fading out. Um, would it make sense to save here? I, um, I don't know. Last time, um, I don't know if it was an option to port over save files from the first demo. Uh, over to this one. It's quite possible that they're not uh, intercompatible because because Clay's provided these two files uh, for us. But yeah, that was good. And it, I think the rest of the game promises to deliver. Um, oh, 2023 is so long to wait, but you can't rush art. Um... It's really cool that that this game has a sense of like uh, drive or purpose. Um, the there there is a clear storyline that kind of makes up in a way for the moodiness or the the depressing moments. Even though there are a lot of depressing moments, um, life moves on. Um, Delta definitely is determined to keep on moving forward and hopefully so is everyone else um, and yeah this has been this has been deeply enjoyable an amazing break from real life uh, just playing just playing this game so I would like to thank you guys for coming to this is part five for coming to part five of Leonard plays Como Rebbe. Um, um, yeah, and you guys already saw all of the announcements that Clay's had to make. The demo itself is available on the Como Rebbe itch.io page. If you just Google Como Rebbe itch, uh, it'll come up. And there's a uh, Clay's Twitter account, uh, the Como Rebbe Discord server. Um, and Clace also has two other games, Winds of Change and Major Minor. Um, I'm really, really excited to check out Major Minor because it's also a uh, like a science fictiony kind of game. Um, and apparently, one of Clace's favorite topics to write about in games is future sight and visions. So, I'm expecting um, a lot within that theme in his other games but yeah thank you guys and um um hope you have a wonderful holiday season it is december 23rd at the time that i'm recording this so you guys have a wonderful holiday season and take care um be safe thank you and goodbye